Hi, I'm Ming. After building all the foundations, we can finally move to the advanced concepts. The strategy I'm going to introduce today is daytime group gloom cobblers, also known as DE double eyes cobblers or simply DE not. Playing cobblers in 5 rows omni scene is not easy, and it's once considered as impossible. Narpo did pioneering work by proposing the group gloom structure back in 2013, and over the years, CZN 5P and others optimized this strategy and made it look like today. Now this strategy is, still, is almost 10 years old, but it's still very classic and is a stepping stone to the more advanced strategies. Okay, let's analyze the setup. Before, I introduced the group gloom structure at night, but in the day, we have two more obstacles, coffee bean and zombie. Because of the coffee bean restriction, uh, we cannot like use, I, use mushrooms whenever we want. We need to coordinate them with other cards. Therefore, like we may like have some compromised suppressions to the zombies. And also, compared to the night cobblers, I added a, an extra ice slot in the back just for the emergency situations. And also for the fumes on column 5, because in the daytime the fumes are dif more difficult to defend and also they are not easy to fix, I simply remove them. And this will have like some compromised jack suppression, and I will mention this later. And for zombies, uh, we'll, for slow tempo, we will use a rotation of instance to kill them in the center. And for fast or variable tempo, we will simply use spike weed. And that's for the center, and for row 2 and 4, like uh, the winter melons and the glooms will precisely kill the zombies like right before they crush the gloom. However, it depends on the fire, the performance of the winter melons. If the winter melons are like heavily blocked, then they may have a tiny chance of crushing that gloom, but that's just like uh, a very, very small chance. And on the side, uh, because we have more space, actually the, we will, like the zombies will be killed very early, so the plants also on column 5 will be mostly safe. Uh, for Giga, uh, the DPS level on row 1 and 5 is 3 minus, 2 and 4 is also 3 minus, and on row 3 it's somewhere between 1 plus and 2 minus. And uh, it, if we use ice to freeze the Gigas within the gloom range, then it will become 3, 3, 2, 3, 3. So like on row 1 and 5, uh, if the gigas are frozen once and stalled once, then they're basically dead. And if they're like frozen, for example, twice and uh, stalled, for example, like four or five times, you can stall them to level four DPS. And on row two and four, uh, if the gigas are frozen once within the gloom range, they're basically dead. Although you may need to stall them once. And on the center, the gigas will be typically killed along with the instant rotation. So there's not nothing too much to worry about, just like use cannon fodders to stall them in the center. Also for beginners, a common mistake of the gigas smashing your fumes or glooms is that like they're not bombed enough times or they're not frozen. So if for row 2 and 4, if the gigas have kind of like reached uh, somewhere in between column 7 and column 8 and they don't have a scar on their head, heads, that means that they still need still need to be bombed once. There's no way that you can stall it to death. And on row one and five, if they have gone like somewhere like on column six, I would say, and they still don't have a scar on their heads, that means they also need to be bombed. Although like you can, as I said before, you can stall them like five or six times to death, but it's always better to bomb them. And in the center, I, I don't know like a good indication of that. But probably, like if they don't have a scar on their on their head, they also need to bomb at, to be bombed at, at least once extra. And if they have, maybe you can stall them to death. Yeah. And for footballs, um, so like if the footballs are also frozen, like for example on column seven or column eight, they're guaranteed to die. If they are frozen on column nine, however, then like. E Mm, it depends on the winter melon, so they may like take a few a few small bites on the gloom. And if they are not frozen, or and or if they are not slowed down, then may, they may deal some uh, massive damage. And same for the digger zombies, because here we only have two glooms at the back to hit the digger zombies. The pump the pumpkin pressure is kind of intense, so like uh, we also want to freeze them like on the side uh, when they come out, uh, because. Because of all of that, I'm going to introduce a new ice timing called the late timing, which uh, is about like uh, you put coffee bean on the ice about 10 or 11 seconds 
uh, after the, the zombies spawn. So like when the digger zombies have uh, gone past the center of column two, I uh, put coffee bean on the ice. And that will first freeze the digger zombies immediately when they come out and also freeze the football zombies on column seven and also freeze the gigas deeper in our setup where we have the most damage. So that will be the most suppressive against the gigas, the footballs and the digger zombies. And what about jacks? Because like for jacks, we need to use the early ice timing, like uh, which is also called the jack suppression timing, but the late ice timing cannot like freeze the jacks. And so in the center, we mainly rely on the three winter melons slowing the jacks down. So like basically if the center is clear, then the winter melons will be pretty effective. And if the center is blocked by other zombies, for example, like Gingas and MJ, the effect will be compromised. But remember, like the early jacks, they're only 5% of the total jacks. So um, like if you were not too unlucky, this jack suppression is still okay. And on the side, uh, we used to have two fume shrooms to suppress the jacks, but now we only have one. But like if the jacks are not slowed down, then these fumes and sorry, if the jacks are not slowed down, then these fumes and glooms will automatically kill the jacks. So like the early jacks cannot reach this gloom and the late jacks will be killed within the safe period. And if the jacks are slowed down, that means that they suffer from the splash damage of the wintermelons. Then because the splash damage of the two wintermelons are more than the direct damage by the fume, uh, so the jacks, uh, so that is equivalent to the double fume jack suppression. But because the wintermelons are unstable, for example, like, uh, for example, there's a, there's a zombie on, on row four and the wintermelon splash it and also splash damage the jack on row five. However, uh, maybe after that, immediately, this zombie dies and this jack is slowed down, but it no longer suffers the splash damage from these two wintermelons, yet it's, it is so slowed down. So in that situation, the jack may have a chance to kill that gloom. So like you can see, this jack suppression mainly relies on the wintermelon, which is not very stable, but it should be good most of the time because our because the jack it has a probability, but like if the if we cannot stop the gigas and the footballs, it's like a hundred percent that you will die. So like it's it, it works more to like uh, mainly focus on the to prioritize on the gigas and footballs, and then if we have like more eyes, we can focus on the jacks. Yeah, so we can never like make everybody happy. I would say. So we, we have to prioritize on the more important ones. And other stuff like balloon zombies, uh, as usual, they will bring some sun and sea slot cost. And I've mentioned the jacks. And also the minor threats include the gargantors. They're same as the gigas, just kill them along with the gigas. And also the MJ. Uh, MJ forces me to put pumpkin on column seven. And also it, it can like significantly block the winter melons. So if possible, uh, we we should uh, put cannon fodders on column nine to stop the to stop the MJ as much as possible. But uh, but again, prioritize on the gigas because they are the most threatening zombies, I would say. And also, there are several different configurations and card sequences for this strategy. Let's talk about the configurations first. So mainly here. Uh, so the because like you can like modify your own setup based on like your interests and your your advantages in your operation I would say so first the wintermelon position uh, the standard uh, the cobblers only have like two wintermelons uh, in the center per center row and I modified it so like we have an extra wintermelon in the center for better jack suppression and also gig and football resistance. And also you can modify it so like you have like three wintermelons also on the uh, on row two and four, and then like maybe one wintermelon in the center. So these numbers like uh, one, two, three, two, one means like there are one wintermelon on row one, uh, two on row two, three on row three, two on row four, one on row five. And this and this is. For this, it will be like one, three, one, three, one. So like, but like the more wintermelons you have, the less space you have for the sunflowers and the and the glooms in the back. So you have to have a balance between your firepower and your like uh, other resistance and your also your, your sun balance. So I would recommend uh, one, two, three, two, one, and one, three, one, three, one is also okay. But like the center will be harder to deal with, and. 
For a sunflower number, uh, the, uh, the classic setup has six, but I think five is like uh, exactly what you need. And also you, if you are more advanced, you can try like four, three, two sunflowers. So the less sunflowers you have, the more space you have for the winter melons. And also for a bad gloom number. So uh, two glooms, although you can see like, you can feel like the pumpkin pressure of two glooms, but I would, I would say like, it's mostly okay. It's just like some like, so the slow temp for slow tempo is like uh, very good. The pumpkin pressure is not too bad. And for a fast tempo, you just need to maybe like freeze uh, like twice or th three times in some like emergency situations, but everything else should be fine. And just maybe if you want to play safe, you can like add more gloom with like three or even four. But I, I think like the winter, the extra winter melons are like more important than the extra glooms. And furthermore, there are a lot of card sequences and card selections that you may want to try. Uh, I, for demonstration, I will just demonstrate the double eyes, late timing, and also you using cherry and doom together. And if you are more interested or more advanced, you can also explore the other sequences. And maybe in the later run through, if I feel appropriate, I will also demonstrate the double puff and the jack suppression timing. Okay, for slow tempo, uh, the idea is like very similar to the um, to the nighttime group boom cobbles. So we basically use like doom ice cherry ice, but because the coffee bean conflicts and we need to use the late ice timing, uh, we in fact like use cherry and doom. To, we in fact use doom after cherry. So the sequence is technically this. So we use cherry first and then doom. So the, the cherry will like clear the zombies and protect the doom and then like use jalapeno to burn the zombies in the center and later use ice to freeze the footballs and diggers and gigas and then use squash to kill the zombies in the center in a similar fashion and then use ice. So like the zombies are killed using like an instant rotation in the center and because we, we bring double ice, uh, if like there are some emergency situations, we can use extra ices. And for the second half, uh, if the tempo gets too fast, then our instant rotation won't be able to kill the zombies. So therefore, we have to like find out ways to slow down the tempo. And I will mention this earlier later in the actual demonstration. And in some like rare cases that like part four is not enough because the squash it recharges fast, we can s swap the squash with jalapeno. So we, we use squash first, and by the time like we use jalapeno, and then the squash will recharge because the squash, is, it, it's recharge is only 30 seconds. So like we can use, if the cherry doesn't recharge, we can use squash first and then cherry doom back to our normal sequence. So that would be card five. And if the tempo is extremely slow, like there's also a card three sequence to use. So you may want to use card three when there are simultaneously uh, Giga, Normal Garg and Buckethead. But like if any one of the, one of those zombies is, is, is missing, you should use card four. So like uh, I've also have a separate demonstration videos for card three, and I will link this. Okay, now I'm going to demonstrate the fast, uh, the slow tempo of the group group cobbles. I'm going to bring double eyes in every instant possible, and store some eyes, and I will begin with uh, cherry, because there are no uh, for, there are no bucket zombies. I want to play card four, so begin with cherry and squash, and then doom. The squash is used to deal extra damage to the gigas. And then jalapeno. There are no gigas in the center now. Uh, freeze the diggers when they reach the center of column 2. And that will also freeze the footballs and also the normal goblin tours or the giga, giga goblin tours. There are no zombies in the center so I can put a squash here right, right now. And because our center is a strong lane, if there are no zombies in the center, the tempo is going to be slow like this. And it, it's not good. But maybe just stall the other gigas. You want the zombies to be distributed evenly. And maybe use the blubber to stall again and later stall the center. So now the tempo is extremely slow. And freeze. Maybe that, will, that won't freeze the digger, but uh, that does. But I want the tempo to be kind of faster, so so I don't want to preemptively freeze the next wave. So I want to try to freeze early, as early as possible. Otherwise, like if you freeze the next wave of zombies, that's going to completely mess up your tempo. 
and maybe maybe stop the side also and then the next wave spawns so cherry on calm 9 to hit the zombies from the current wave and ideally the next wave will spawn but not this time but i think the next wave will probably spawn soon i will just choose to stall the gigas on the side and then it spawns so if like you think the next wave will not spawn anytime soon you should probably like use an extra ice and then next wave uh hop human and squash both recharge but i don't see a lot of zombies blocking the squash in the center so i would prefer to use squash and then freeze again and freeze under the giga so that the ice also acts as a cannon fodder everything's going fine now these gigas as long as they're like stalled once or twice they should die and also frozen once in the gloom range and then next wave jalapeno and maybe use a blubber because i want the next wave to spawn fast enough maybe use it after you freeze that, that will completely avoid the preemptive timing. I don't know exactly how to use ice, honestly. But that Giga is frozen, it should definitely die. These Gigas, if they're like bombed by Cherry and Doom, they will also die. So maybe I can stall, I should stall here. And these Gigas, uh, yeah, I, 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 for, I forgot about them. So... I should bomb them. Maybe I should prioritize free, uh, stalling on row 2 and 4 because these gigas are the closest to the gloom. But now since I'm bombing them, then they are dead. If they're bombed once, they're typically be guaranteed to die. And then doom. So after you see the goblin tours in the center slow down, doom. And meanwhile, stall the other goblin tours. And here, if you see any goblin tours not slow down, you should use an ice. But because there are no zombies on row 4, I'm almost certain that this Gargon Tour won't be slowed down later, so sooner or later. Maybe I should time this ice a little later to, to freeze the Gargon Tours within the uh, deeper in my setup so that they can uh, more damage can be dealt. But yeah, that's kind of like a small mistake. And I can put a squash on row 2 to kill the zombies later. I don't know, stall here maybe. Now, so if these Gargon Tours are frozen, and it's a lot easier to stall them. Yeah, so freeze the bungees, uh, burn the zombies in the center, but there's none for this wave. We stall this one. And just keep stalling the gigas on the side, now they all die, so we focus on the center. And for Soul Temple, the crater on column 8 will typically recharge. So we can wait for that. Now it recharges. And we'll wait for the next wave to spawn and then use Cherry. Or if this wave is super slow, you can use Cherry directly. And maybe use a... Maybe I can bomb now. So we want to delay the, I, the Cherry timing so that the Cherry also reaches the zombies from the current wave. Like this. Like, like right now. And also don't let the Gigas smash the center. Now the next wave spawns, I can use Doom. And maybe also stall somewhere else. Okay, now the Gigas are disappearing, so I want to slow down the tempo. And when putting Squash on Column A, avoid the MJ. If the Squash misses the MJ and uh, misses the Zombie, you die. And then freeze. To slow down, to slow down the tempo, you want to freeze early. Oh, sorry, my hand slipped, so it's, the ice timing is actually later than usual. And then jalapeno. These gigas, maybe like I should stall them one, once more, but the Gargon Tours in the center are actually more threatening, so maybe I should prioritize the center first. This football is pretty wild, but I don't think I have good ways to deal with it. Maybe I can freeze now, but even if I freeze now, this football... Okay, it doesn't touch my boom, but... The price of freezing now is that it misses the digger zombies. But since I didn't see a lot of digger zombies underground, so I still choose to freeze earlier than usual to just control the football zombies. Because the football zombies, for, for some reason, the winter melons fail to slow them down. So they're moving very fast, like faster than, than usual, I would say. Faster than the digger zombies, than when the digger zombies are going to cause some real damage. On uh, the next wave, uh, the cherry doesn't recharge. 
So maybe I can use squash to squash the zombies first and then later use cherry. Because now there are no gigas. And if there are gigas, the tempo is typically going to be slow. But since there's no zombie in the center, I can use cherry directly. If there is, you may want to either use squash first or remove the pumpkin and then use cherry. But since now, like, I think even if I don't re remove the pumpkin, the zombie in the center won't crush. So that's okay. Cherry. And then next wave, doom, you can delay the timing like, by one or two seconds. And then next wave, uh, squash. Avoid the MJ again. And freeze. Okay, next wave, jalapeno. And then next, next wave, cherry or squash. Whichever recharges. And this god controller it should die, but since there are no gigas, I don't need to distribute my cannon fodders. I don't need to consider about when to stall. Next wave, cherry should recharge, so that's okay. If, if it doesn't, then you have to use squash. Yeah, you can see the card, the recharge of the cards are pretty tight for the second half. So you want to slow down the tempo as much as possible, but since we still have a squash as our final backup, it's okay. And for the Gargon Tours on the side, just stall them. And also, uh, stall the center first, I forgot that. And if they're not slowed down, you don't have to use an extra ice. Uh, they will just maybe smash the pumpkin or do some weird damages. Th this Gargon Tour, I think if I stall it once, it should definitely die. And I'll focus on the side, like this. Because here, there are a, lot, a, a horde of Gargon Tours on row 1. So I want to stall them first. The Gargon Tours on row 5 are slowed down pretty readily, so they should probably die. Yeah, now they all die because we have level 3 DPS on the side. So the Gargon Tours, they are less than level 2. I don't think they are too threatening. For the wrap up, uh, uh, freeze the bungee, squash on row 5, uh, cherry on row 2, and then doom on row 1. And maybe use blubber to kill the remaining balloon zombies. Yeah, so. This is my my way of wrap up. Maybe there are other ways, but it's difficult to like protect the doom uh, against the jack simultaneously while while like uh, try to doom all the zombies and the balloon zombies. So for this, I bombed row one, two, three twice and row four and five once, and so I still need to stall row three, four, and five. But fortunately, our strategy has this kind of like a staircase. Structure, so I can stall the stall and kill the gigas one by one. So after the gigas on row four die, like row five still has a lot of space, so I can kill them. So I can like distribute my cannon fodders like in a good way. You can see now they're all killed, like killed one by one. And as you can see here, this is the slow tempo. It's I'll say it's not easy, but it's definitely playable. And the tip is just to use your cannon fodders wisely, like. First, uh, prioritize on the center, and if the center is not very threatening, threatening, then stall on row two and four, because and then finally like row one and five, and sometimes like the bombs, the eyes, they can also act as cannon fodders, and also the pumpkin. If you see like the giga on row two and four going crazy, and you you don't have a cannon fodder or like this spot is covered by a crater, then you should use pumpkin to stall because like uh, a pumpkin is only one twenty five, like. If you lose a gloom, then it, it will become incredibly difficult to play. So I didn't actively fix the pumpkin in the second half. You can see this pumpkin is broken, but you can see like if you just uh, keep an eye on the pumpkin, the pumpkin shouldn't be too problematic. If you just freeze the diggers like regularly, and also don't don't let the gigas smash too too many pumpkins on the side, and in the center you should be fine. And the sun, I think I lost like 700 or 600 sun, which should be fine for five sunflowers. So normally for a slow tempo, you will lose like around between like 500 to 1,000 to 1,200, I would say. Like if, you, if you're just unlucky or if you play badly. And for a variable tempo, you, you will lose like 1,000-ish. And as long as you lose within like 1,500, you should be fine. Here's a variable tempo demo of DEIS Cobbles. And let's bring spikeweed instead of jalapeno. And let me change the variable temple zombies. Sorry. 
Yes, so let's rock. For variable tempo, we will play card 4. And it's very stable, very stably card 4. Because the variable tempo is typically faster than the slow tempo. We still begin with Doom and Cherry. And then Fly Queen. Because we don't we don't like burn the zombies in the center, we have to stall them more carefully. And freeze. This Giga is pretty wild. There are like a huge number of Gigas in the in the center. Very scary. Then squash. After using squash, like most of them should die. Stall again. And then later freeze again. Yes, like this. And now the new wave spawns, but um, the cherry hasn't recharged yet, so I'm going to use Spike Weed to poke the zombies in the center, and then use cherry. So is there a zombie in the center? I didn't see any. Is there? No, there isn't. So just use Blubber to stall the Giga, and then maybe Cherry Bomb. After using Cherry, this Giga should die. I'm not too worried about it. Okay. And then use Doom as, as usual. And then because Squash recharges, I'm going to use it right now. Because Squash is cheaper than Spike Weed, and it can also um, hit the Gigas and the footballs. It's like very worth the money. Keep stalling the center. Now there are not a lot of, a lot of Gigas on the scene. So then use Spike Weed. And freeze again. Because the tempo is actually now is faster than cut four. So we want to uh, actively try to speed it, slow it down. And that's the wrap up. And the squash is ready. So I can first use squash to squash the zombies in the center. And then when cherry bomb recharges, um, I can use it. Where should I put that blubber? Maybe here. And then use cherry. And then use Doom. Okay, so now everything should be fine now. Keep stalling the Gigas on the side and also in the center. Uh, these Gigas are not slowed down, so I will freeze again. Because like, if they're not slowed down, they're very very dangerous. Uh, maybe first stall the center, and then stall the side. Because the central Gigas will threaten the setup immediately. The side will still take some time. I will probably lose that pumpkin, but that's inevitable because those gigas are not slowed down for a very long period of time. So... Okay, this giga is not slowed down, that's so annoying. And even if I lose the pumpkin, I still have to stall these. Okay, for wave 10, freeze the bungee first. And after this giga is frozen, it will, will probably die. And poke the zombies in the center if there is any. Okay, now it finally dies. It's so scary. And maybe stall the center now. And after that Giga is about to smash the puff on, on columns 8, I'll use Cherry. And then use Doom on column 9 immediately, because you see here, the crater on column 8 doesn't recharge, uh, so I will use Doom on column 9. Doom. And then uh, keep stalling the center. And use Squash. So that's wave 13, I guess. Wait, that's wave 12, because I used Cherry on wave 10, Doom on wave, wave 11, now it's wave 12. So Squash the center. And yeah, maybe stall some somewhere else. That's wave 12. And now you can see there are no gigas. Uh, there are no new gigas. So I will use ice. I will delay my ice timing to also freeze the next wave of the zombies, so that I can freeze like two waves of footballs. And the digger zombies they won't inflict too much damage. So that that is wave wait 12, right? Wave 12. 
We're 13. You can see these um, diggers only take like a little bite. And then that's wave 14. I can use squash. Keep stalling the remaining gigas. And wave 15, we can use cherry. Uh, it's good to use cherry quickly so that it can also bomb the underground digger zombies. Wave 16, doom. Wave 17, cherry or a spike weed or squash. Maybe squash. But the jack ex explodes. Uh, I don't know which jack explodes, but I think it's it's the center. So I will use the spike weed just to play safe. Oh, it's not the center, so I should have used squash. But you never know which jack explodes. It's better to play safe. Oh, that's quite dangerous. Uh, wave 18. Uh, we can use squash. Oh. Sorry about that. Stall the center, because that pumpkin is pretty badly hurt. That's the wrap-up, wave 19. So I use the balloon, I, I, I blow away the balloons on wave 18, so I can uh, delay some time for the balloon zombies on wave 19. And keep stalling the center, because like this pumpkin is broken pretty badly. Maybe just store some cannon fodder. And blow away the balloon zombies, wrap everything up. For the wrap up, you can put squash on row 1 for now. So if like there's ice trail on row 1, you have to wait for the, uh, the, the zombies to die and then stall the gigas together and use squash. And that's also okay, like the squash will recharge. Freeze the bungees, uh, put cherry in the center. Uh, meanwhile, just store some extra cannon fodders. And then there are no jacks on row 5, so I can put the doom directly. If there are, you may want to like wait for them like the interval that they won't explode and then use doom. Otherwise, if your doom is bombed by the early jack, you, you die. Or you may not die, but it's like very difficult to play. You know? Uh, so I've bombed the central three lanes twice, and row 1 and 5 once each. So I will still need to stall row 1, uh, 3, and 5. But like these gigas, like there are no zombies blocking the winter melon shots, so sh they shouldn't be too difficult to stall. And the sun, I think I lost like a thousand like, and like 300, 400. And it's not, it's not too good, but since we have 5 sunflowers, it, it, should, it shouldn't be too bad either. The fast tempo will be very similar to the second half of the variable tempo. Just execute the card 5 sequence and try to use ice to freeze the two waves of football zombies and also the digger zombies from the previous wave. And just to keep an eye on the football zombies and maybe the digger zombies. So the main threat are, are, are the footballs. And for extreme fast tempos, even without footballs, we simply poke the zombies in the center and maybe like we, we can bring double pumpkin to deal with the digger zombies, I guess. So these two are quite easy and I'm not going to demonstrate this in this video, but you should get, you should get the idea.